Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today our, in our fifth Fluorescent Friday event. My name is Dr. Lina Cárdenas and I'll be your host. I'm an assistant professor at the School of Design at the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. The Inter-Society um, Color Council created Fluorescent Fridays as a platform for international university students across disciplines to network with color professionals and share cutting edge research with each other. Our goal is to build a global student chapter that positions color as a multidisciplinary STEAM model color science. Um, science, technology, um, engineering, arts, math, and provide up-to-date color research by scientists, artists, designers, industry professionals, and university students. If you're interested in getting involved, check our website for more information and learn about the benefits of becoming a member. We would love to have you joining us. Today's event is Color in Context for Architects and Designers, featuring architecture and industrial design students from the Universidad Politécnica de Valencia in España. They will share recent projects that use strategically uh, color as a tool to solve local design challenges. You will also meet the professors. Um, Architect Juan Sierra, author of an excellent uh, book, Color for Architects from Princeton Architectural Press, and industrial designer Irene de la Torre. Get your questions ready for our Q&A session after the presentation. Please write them down in the chat box so the panel can answer um, your questions after the presentation. Uh, are we ready? <laughs> okay, so um, our first guest is Juan Serra. ¿Sí lo, lo pronuncié? Sí. Perfecto. <laughs> Juan is an architect, professor, and subdirector of research of the School of Architecture at the Polytechnic University of Valencia, UMB, and also an specialist in modern and contemporary European, European architecture. He's a member of the color research group of the Heritage Restoration Institute, a member of the competitive research projects related to color and architecture, and it's on the editorial board of color research and application. John, um, then our second guest is Irene de la Torre Fornes, She's an architect and professor of the Department of Architectural Graphic Expression at the Polytechnic University of Valencia. Um, she, uh, she is also in, um, yes, sorry, <laughs> of Valencia. And a member also of the um, Color Research Group in the Heritage Restoration Institute. Irene has a master's degree in architectural heritage con conservation and is a PhD specialist in ceramic tiling and color in architecture. Okay, Juan and Irene will introduce their students, Pepe Sanchez Malo, Patricia de los Fritos Perez, Paula Ballesteros Cabrero, and Marina Valle Simón. Uh, Juan and Irene, the screen is yours. Welcome to Fluorescent Fridays. Thank you. thank you very much, Lina. Uh, thank you for this kind introduction. And of course, thank you for this opportunity that you give us to present how we deal with color in our color courses. Uh, let me share the screen with you and check that everything works properly. Okay, I'll do share the audio <laughs> with you and we will need it. Okay, this is 
No, comment the pantalla. The screen number two, share. And now we are in the first slide. Okay. So we will talk about the way in which we tackle color uh, in our color courses in the Polytechnic University of Valencia. Um, we are members of a color research group of the Heritage Restoration Institute, as Lina has introduced, of the UPV. So the group was founded by Professor Angela Garcia, who is a painter and enthusiastic about color and the responsible probably in part for our interest in color. We are a group of professionals from different disciplines, mainly architecture, and have experience in research projects related with color, architecture, and design for more than 25 years. We are also university professors involved in teaching at graduate and master level to students of architecture and industrial design. Here you Juan, have. Can I, can I introduce you just for a second? Can you get your screen a little bit bigger? Is it possible? Um, I think we saw it a little bit bigger in our in our um, rehearsal. In the rehearsal. Okay, let me check if you, I share the other screen if it looks better. Uh, so let's. I know stop. you have wonderful slides, so I was just hoping we could see them as big as we can. Okay, let's see if, if sharing this first screen. Okay, and I will do this. Finish the presentation. Okay, is it is it better now? Yes. Does, does, does it look bigger? Yes. Okay, but now I've forgotten to share the audio, so just wait a moment. <laughs> we'll do it again. <laughs> it's worth it, though. Thank you. There are some tricky things in this. Okay, uh, compartir. Yes. Okay, there it is. And yeah. I will minimize this. Okay, so uh, these are this is a list of some of the subjects that we teach at graduate and, and master level. Um, if you if you want to deepen in in the information, all the information that we will present is available in our in our website grupocolor.webs.upb.s particularly in the docencia, when it says docencia, okay? So, well, if I have to highlight what is a specific of our approach to color teaching, I would say that we always try to make our students face, face up to real context. For that, we collaborate with companies and institutions out of the university that become our clients during the course. Students develop a real project for these companies and an external jury awards the best solution in the form of a student's competition. Here you can see some of the posters of the final exhibitions of the projects of our students from last courses. We have worked in public spaces, in the stands for international exhibitions, hospitals, laboratories, care homes, and many other places. So the title of our talk this evening is Coloring Context, because we insist to our students that the different readings of the context can give them the clues and the arguments for their color decision and color for architects and designers, because it is the title of the book we use in our courses. The book was published by Princeton Architectural Press two years ago. I wanted to write it because of my concerns as a professional and academic to give a thoughtful answer to architectural color simultaneously from three approaches, technical, cultural, and artistic. So you will see that our method in class also tries to follow these three approaches. Well, first, to set a coloring context properly, we teach our students how to read the physical context. This approximately corresponds 
with the first part of a book in which we tackle color as a physical and perceptual phenomenon. Color is a fortunate dance between light, the object, and the observer. We experience that the perceived color can shift under different lighting conditions, something that we train in the activities of the book. Our students, and here you have some of their results, see how color and light interact working with physical models to discover unexpected color effects while working with their hands and also working with different materials and pigments. We learn to collect the most relevant colors of a physical context in a reliable way using different standard notation systems and digital tools. Like in this example of the Valencia Central Market, uh, to obtain an inspiring color palette that the students will use in their, propos in their proposals. Following the information of the central part of the book, we also learn how to choose the colors that fit the form. And after the study of existing projects, we decide whether if we want to use those colors of the physical context to integrate our project and merge from the distance, or on the contrary, if we prefer to stand out from the surroundings and highlight our building. Well, a second idea related with the reading of the context is that uh, we need to read the context from a formal point of view. And this is quite important for us. I am absolutely confident in color as a powerful tool to enhance our formal intentions. This is the decision about the shape. And this is probably the main legacy of the architectural color from the modern period. Modern architecture was definitely not white. And this is discussed about in chapter seven of the book. On the contrary, a green color for Le Corbusier was a useful tool to a useful resource, finally, to emphasize the independence of the ground floor of his iconic Ville Savoie. Therefore, color interacts with the form and can shift its features, like the perception of distance in an interior. So this is the case of the project that won the competition for a color intervention in a corridor of a laboratory in the UPV. The, student, the students, in this case, it was a group of, of three students, of two students, um, they displayed a sequence of strips with different widths in black and white. Therefore, this corridor looked longer when observed from a hole representing the past and looked shorter when observed from the main hall corresponding to the future, an optical illusion to reinforce an architectural intention. The perception of depth can also be shifted following the principles of color interactions indicated by Joseph Albers, like in this pavilion of the campus in the UPV. A third idea that we would like to share with you is that the context has a functional, functional issues that color can help to clarify. For example, in the case of a hospital, which was the project from last course, the group of students who won the competition invented a solution to improve the quality of these conventional interiors by displaying colors in a functional way. Each room, dedicated to a different medical specialization was identified with a color and a representative drawing. Bones and muscles, brain, heart, neonato, and so on. And following the path of a color, it was easy to find the way to each examination room. In a different case, in the competition for a care home for the elderly, color was a functional resource 
to obtain a living place for different activities. In a plain lobby, which didn't have any previous hierarchy, a continuous sequence of colors, like a chessboard with different hues, helped to define small places intended for different activities. A fourth idea, another important issue regarding the context, is to read the colors from a cultural point of view, which implies understanding the particular significance of every color in a given society or a group of people. In chapter eight of the book, I discuss about the meanings of the colors, including aspects of color psychology and human reactions to color. In the case of Valencia, we have a long tradition in the cultivation of oranges. Therefore, in this student's proposal, a palette with orange and green colors has particular significance to resemble nature in this interior design project. Or in this second example, the blue colors and curves help to resemble the waves of our Mediterranean Sea and all the connotations of peace and calmness intended for the design of a lattice in this hospital interior. Well, in these same hospitals, but complete, using a, a completely different color palette, like this black background with LED digital spotlights, uh, colors have a very different significance. They resemble the traditional X-ray films for the diagnosis. And at the same time, colors have connotations of a cutting edge technology in a leading hospital. Another possible context, which is somehow independent to the previous ones, is the artistic context in which the solutions are being developed. This context approximately corresponds with the final chapters of the central part of the book. And the artistic context can be considered as an unavoidable context because it is contemporary to the design fact and its link with actual trends in color and architecture. In the case of a competition for a medical office without natural lighting, with the spaces having this conventional neutral aspect, one of our students found an effective artistic context in the reinterpretation of the work by our artist Carlos Cruz Diez with the design of a lattice and a physical model coherent with these colors. In another occasion, the abstraction of the famous painting of the water lilies by Claude Monet gave the clues for the color and composition of this lattice and color intervention. And more recently, a revision of the work by Olafur Eliasson inspired the colors for these screens anti-COVID to be displayed in the interior of the hospital. Well, thank you very much. And now I will leave the floor to my colleague, Irene de la Torre. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, well, this same conceptual methodology that we have been looking at with examples of interiors and architecture is also used to address colorful products like ceramic tiles. The choice of ceramic tiles in the works of our students from industrial design is motivated by several reasons. A strong ceramic industry network in Valencia, close to the university, a long tradition of ceramic tiles in traditional architecture in Valencia that dates back to the 15th century, its validity and future projection as a material used in interior design and new trends, and a predetermined shape and size that allow to focus on the chromatic aspects of the design. Let's see now the technical context 
because one of the limitation, uh, limitations of working for real clients is that not all the colors are available in every situation. In particular, the color gamut of the ceramic industry is very short. This limitation of the color gamut is due to the manufacturing process. As you know, ceramic pieces undergo a firing process. At the temperature at which the pieces get the desired resistance, not all pigments can resist. To within the color palette would imply a second firing process that would increase the price of the finite piece. As the ties that we design are manufactured with just one firing process, the students work with a reduced color palette. For example, if you pick the color, the magenta color, you get this kind of brown color to work with. The last part of Color for Architects book deals with the management of different gamut in digital conditions and explains how to manage color precisely in the workflow of a studio. It deals with questions about color profiles of digital files, that's what we manage in our subject, uh, calibrating screens and printers and instruments to measure color on site. However, the limitation of the ceramic gamut becomes an opportunity to enhance creativity in real circumstances. You will see the diversity of proposals achieved with a reduced number of colors. Students work in specific environments spread all over the city of Valencia from different periods and architectural styles, such as the Museum of Modern Art, buildings from the modernism period, etc. As we have seen, we approach the design of the tiles from the analysis of the different contexts where the ceramic pieces will be located. This context provides the keys, the inspiration to which the pieces must respond. The proposals range from chromatic printing on all the surface to a linear intervention, and the combinatory possibilities and prolongation of the motifs become an added value. Here you have some example of the ceramic uh, tile designs. In these designs for the modern Velez Events building, the blue color of the environment, the sea and the sky, is chosen to create organic compositions. This proposal for the modernist color market pays tribute to the sinuosity of the article designs. The, de the design for the restaurant at Arafana's building is based on the idea of resilience, which is the ability of the material to adapt to different conditions. That's represented with the curves. The shape and colors of the hemispheric building are used to design the ceramic piece for the entrance floor in this building. This proposal wants to reflect the social context of the Cabana neighborhood with a composition that evokes graffiti designs. In this proposal for the Moving Museum, the students based their work on the artist who was exhibiting in one of the galleries of that museum. Functional signage is the guiding idea behind this proposal for the subway station, marking the route as if it was a blanket of flowers. Emotional bonds is the idea behind this design for the pediatric area of the Hospital La Fe in Valencia. This proposal for Bombas Hens Art Center, formerly a water pumps factory, to which the design makes a reinterpretation, was awarded second prize of a competition organized by the International Ceramic Exhibition Tevisama in 2019. The results are shown in exhibitions that take place in the hall of the School of the Design of the UPV during the month of January, with catalogs that include the motivations that have led to the ideation of its proposal. Some of these designs have also been exhibited at the Tevisama International Exhibition of Ceramics for Architecture here in Valencia. This collaboration has allowed us to confirm the positive synergy between students and ceramic companies, as the company benefits from the freshness and creativity provided by the students 
and the students benefit from the learning experience of seeing their work finally manufactured, facing real situations in which economic and technical limitations must be transformed into new opportunities. Well, now I will present the work of the students of Master of Industrial Design, Paula Ballesteros, awarded with the second prize in the students' competition. She will also show the results of her final thesis that was developed together with the ceramic company. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Paula, and I'm going to show you the design of a ceramic timepiece that we have created as a final assignment of the course. The building that we have chosen was the Fallas Museum. Fallas is a traditional part here in Valencia. It's a party full of color, with a great ambience, and that's what we want to represent in our design. We visit the space, we create a storyboard, and we sketch new designs. In our design, we want to represent the warmth of the fire and the sinuosity of the patterns of the Valencia traditional dress, in this case of the Fallera traditional dress. And this is our proposal, we call it Reina. It's a minimalistic way to represent um, a Fallera. We can show the traditional dress, showing the skirt with the cancan, and also with the hands up, enjoying the traditions. We have used brown colors because we want to represent the warmth of the fire and the union between people. It's so important this here in Valencia and also in this party. The people is the most important. And with this design, we have won the second prize of the Tau Ceramica competition. My master final thesis continues with the chromatic study of the spaces through ceramic coffee. In this case, I have studied the favorite colors of the customers of a well-known restaurant here in Valencia and also what's the effect cost on them. By a statistical survey, I create um, a new design. Making um, conclusions of this study, we can create a new design to to show the concept and to reinforce the concept of the restaurant. My proposal is Bruma. Bruma shows mm, the dynamism of the waves, showing this mm, in a minimalistic way too. I have chosen the brown colors for the background and the blue and the white for represent the waves. To apply my design to the restaurant, I have created a material mold board. And that's the result to apply Bruma. We can show a comfy space, neutral, natural too, and with a great personality. The dynamism of the piece is so interesting in this space. I hope that my little presentation has been helpful to you. To, to know how we learn he, mm, color here in the Polytechnic University of Valencia. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay, thank you, Paula. And now uh, let me introduce you uh, the recording of three of the students of the Master in Advanced Architecture, Landscape and Urban Planning at UPB. Uh, Pepe Sanchez Malo, he's architect with professional experience in architect architecture studio. Marina Valle Simon, who is graduating in industrial design and product and with professional experience in Estelle Rail. And Patricia de Frutos Perez, graduate in aerospace engineering and international student Erasmus Plus in interior architecture in Berlin International University of Applied Science. So this is the... Good afternoon. We are Patricia, Pepe and Marina, students of the Master of Science in Advanced Architecture at the Polytechnic University of Valencia. We are going to introduce our project Cumulonimbus, an idea that was awarded the first prize at the last South America Design Contest. Cumulonimbus is a large, tall type of cumulus cloud 
that is often dark and brings heavy rain or a thunderstorm. The project stems from a competition of ideas promoted by the company Tau Ceramica. Tau is a Valencian company, and it's currently the ceramic enterprise with the highest level of sales in Europe. They manufacture and export ceramics all around the world, and they have a great variety of ceramic tiling that reproduce the aspect of natural stone, wood, metal, or concrete. Generally, their color palettes are quite discreet, and they show a brand image of a certain luxury and timeless elegance. The pavilion's design had to be inspired by a concept as current as it is their resilience. Resilience is the ability to recover from difficulties, coming out strengthened, and being able to adapt to a new environment or situation. The competition is intended to design a new pavilion for a trade fair in order to exhibit their products in the international events in the ceramic industry. We interpreted the concept of resilience with the idea of a grey, dense cloud that represents all those difficulties surrounding us, especially those related to COVID pandemic, and that we all together managed to lift up, to clear the horizon and get ahead stronger. The idea starts from the compact volume of a traditional pavilion. The volume is divided horizontally in two parts, the cloud and the earth. The cloud rises to the sky partially revealing its interior to catch the eye of visitors. The cloud breaks down into many pieces to give it that light cloud appearance. Two levels are created on the basement. The first one that goes up and introduces you into the cloud. Inside the material is exposed floating and changing color. On the other level Three holes form the spaces for several activities. Reception bar, kitchen and storehouse, big sizes and meeting areas. The base is constructed from a metallic structure that rises up to one meter from the ground floor and that is coated with ceramic tiles. The main metal structures hold the perimeter pieces that constitute the fascia and others that hang from the ceiling. A secondary structure supports the weight of the interior pieces of the exhibition. Exhibited pieces are placed in three different forms according to their position. On the perimeter, forming the facades. On the shelling, along the interior. Finally, the pieces are placed mechanically by an especially designed structure. Access. Private meeting area. Kitchen room and storehouse. Multifunction space, Agora. Meeting areas, big size pieces. Exhibition route. Here we can see some sections of the pavilion where it can be appreciated the two levels of the base. The color proposal for our pavilion is inspired again by the idea of the cloud. It intends to express the unitary aspect of a cloud and, at the same time, its subtle color variations. As in the clouds, the colors of the pavilion are simultaneously solid and light. In short, the pavilion seems like a floating solid that can be also passed through, like a cloud. The color palette chosen is based on the range of colors of the Taos catalog. By choosing materials from different collections, we have compound this color gradient. The material's choice provides a visual continuity all along the external perimeter as a whole, as a unit. The gradient not only radiates through the facade, but also expands tridimensionally towards the interior, fusioning into the color of the exhibited pieces in the interior. First, we analyzed every collection of the Tau company and classified them by their chromaticism, paying special attention to the color tones and brightness in order to put together that gradient that expands throughout the perimeter. Regarding the color, which is what we wanted to emphasize here, we chose different strategies for each of the parts of the pavilion. Likewise, this color change is produced towards the interior of the pavilion, in its pieces exhibited inside and on the ceiling, creating this tridimensional effect that surrounds the visitor and brings him into the cloud. For the base, we chose a dark and neutral black color that could differentiate and didn't compete with the colorful cloud of the upper pieces. 
We chose the black because, besides it reinforces the rotundity of the base making it more visually heavy, at the same time makes the upper part look lighter. In the inner spaces, the meeting area and the agora, we wanted to use some chromatically striking pieces to cover the floor and the base perimeter. We used one single model with a different color that brings certain autonomy to each of these spaces, a homogeneous color to provide a certain intensity and to engage the user. For the cloud, we decided to organize the exhibited pieces according to their chromaticism, arranging them by color tone and forming that gradient that runs through the pavilion in three dimensions, both on its facades and on its interior and ceilings. Going from grayish tones to more creamy, white, oxidized or black. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. This is us and this is a little bit of the work of our students. Well, thank you Juan and Irene for that wonderful presentation. Now um, we'll be open uh, the floor for any questions for our panel. You can write them down in the chat. Um, yes, and let me say, first of all, too, uh, to Juan and uh, Arena and your students, that was a marvelous. Um, and the presentations were so beautiful. So we, we all, you know, on behalf of everyone, we thank you for, for putting them together and showing us that. And I, I'm going to note that there was a question by Susan Fisher um, about the book. Uh, first of all, Juan, she wants to, Susan wants to know if she could buy the book directly in Europe. She just sees it on Amazon. Yes, it's available in Amazon. In fact, the book has been translated into French recently. So it's also available via the editorial uh, monitor. Well, I, I don't know how to pronounce it in, in French, but it's, it's an, an, a specific uh, editorial uh, devoted to, to, architect, to architecture. So yes, yes. <laughs> so it's on Amazon then. Um, and yes. Okay, and then would you be able to put in the website for that that we want you know into the chat box so that so that we can I think we're interested yes. in seeing the presentations because I know there's a lot you said there's on the website that we can really see about the program. Yes, I think it's important to know that we have our our the website of our color research group includes all the well all the the research projects also the the teaching staff, but we have like two or three smaller sites specific for the uh, the different projects of our students. So I think that if you don't mind, I will share the three of them or the most important. The one from uh, the color research group, which is the big one, and then the, the smaller one specific for the, because perhaps the students will prefer just to go directly to this second uh, web pages, okay? That's Yes, John, but I believe there's a question by John Seymour. John, what, you had a question. I saw in the book that there was uh, pictures of the capture and the color muse. I'm just wondering what kind of market penetration they have. Is that something that is in the pocket of every architect? Uh, do your students regularly use them? Uh, well, we, we work with the instruments we have in our, in our color research group. So we have uh, for years uh, been working with the Mansell Atlas uh, for our mm -hmm. color studies in the historical city center mm -hmm. because it has a wide range of colors uh, related with the earth. So it was very useful for us. But in fact, in Europe, uh, more recently, the natural color system is being uh, like more spread uh, in industry. So we also work with that and that color capture uh, is the one we use mainly for the natural color system measurements. Um, we, we mainly work with both of them, really, with these two atlases. But all, obviously, we introduce our students to the digital uh, color notations uh, spaces because we always need to, to, well, to work on a screen and to, to print, to compare. And those, mm -hmm. uh, our, stu our students suffer 
those problems of, of having a non-homogeneous uh, workflow. So yes, we, we also try to deal with that. But uh, we, we always try that they uh, work with, with real physical uh, target colors, not, not just on a screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yep, and and you know, there's a number of people here that aren't architects. So the, the tools that you're talking about and that, that John brought up are kind of are, are new. So I think uh, I'm glad you brought them up because I think I think we, we, you know part of this is to share ideas so we can actually learn from other you know what other groups are doing. And I, I was going to ask for both Juan and Irene, um, how what what how long do the students work on this project? And, uh, and I see that Maggie asks, do all the students in architecture take the color course? Is it required or as an elective? Um, well, in my case, um, as you know, uh, we are working with a ceramic company. So uh, as they manufacture the, the ceramic tiles, uh, we have to manage time to, you know, they, they have uh, the timing. You know, they have to manufacture a lot of tiles for other markets. So we need to be on the right time to manufacture the ceramic tiles for the students. So uh, this course is four months, uh, but uh, in fact, we designed the ceramic tile uh, in one month to be printed, to be manufactured for the ceramic uh, company. But as the course uh, lasts for four months, I, I used to say my students that they can still change their ideas, uh, you know, because they, uh, they need to, to deliver the, the file in a specific date, but, you know, it's, it's something that the company needs, but not us, okay? So it's like, okay, you, you have this month to manufacture the tile, but if you still, uh, need to change any idea, you can do that. But in fact, every student uh, do all the designs in one month, uh, but we uh, spend the rest of the course um, learning other kind of, you know, stuff of color in other um, situations, in other objects, not only the ceramic tile. This is one of the works that we, one of the assignments that we uh, have in the course but we have other assignments, but specifically for the ceramic tile is uh, the design is about a, a month. Yes, the, the subjects are elective. They, they are usually elective subjects from the last courses of the, of the bachelor degree. Bachelor, mm -hmm. Is it bachelor in English? The, the, the mm -hmm. grade of, of architecture or uh, also elective subjects of the masters. Mm -hmm. And they, they last from one, one semester. Uh, approximately yes so what we do when the when the final project is is, uh, is big we work in collaboration with other related subjects and we try to develop different parts of the same project uh, in with with the collaboration of other of other teachers in my case in the case of the the last uh, exhibition pavilion that you have seen we work more in the design and the color uh, of the pavilion in my subject, and together with Professor Jose Luis Sigon, they work the more constructive uh, staff in, in his subject. So we try always to collaborate from, uh, from different mm. subjects. Mm. Well, that, that kind of leads us, Juan, to something that I think a lot of us are, have won wondered about, and you've talked about this a little bit when, we, when I first heard you talk about your book, but how unusual is it? You, you wrote the book, uh, Color for Architects, and, and um, how unusual is it that you have this kind of focus in a department? And what, what was it that drove you to write that book? We know how hard it is to write a book. And you know, was there not another book out there? How different is your approach? You know, can you give us a little bit of a sense of how, how you came up to do this? <laughs> Well, because probably I'm, I am also an enthusiastic about color as the rest of you. <laughs> and, and well, I noticed that it was necessary because uh, th there are too many fears uh, related with the color in between our colleagues. And it's, it's mainly because we have, uh, we have uh, like a, 
uh, how to say, not, not a, a strong or thoughtful uh, education in color during our uh, education in the, in the school. So, so first I, I was sure that, well, the first thing I tried to do is to, to work in the, in the historiographic uh, revision to, to, be, to, to convince to the rest of our colleagues that we need to feel confident because the masters of the modern period, they use color, they use that in a very uh, thoughtful and interesting way. And, and, and we cannot rely anymore in that uh, error, in that idea that the, 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 the modern interesting architecture should be just in white color. So once this false belief is um, exposed, I think we can then start talking uh, freely and more, uh, how to say, more relaxed about all the uh, interesting possibilities that color can provide to mm -hmm. strengthen our architectural ideas. I think that the, the second um, prejudice, the second prejudice is probably that uh, Architects um, always try, we, we try that all the elements of the project try to go together uh, in order to reach an idea, a concept. So I think that's the way, that, that's the interesting way of uh, to learn or to practice color in architecture. To, at the moment you discover that color is a useful tool uh, to work with, to emphasize, to reinforce, to reach that idea you are working with, wow, uh, it's, uh, you, you don't leave it aside anymore. I mean, it, it goes together with you. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and the third, uh, probably um, personal moment in which I, I convinced myself that I needed to, to deepen in this was the, the moment I visited uh, the Ville Savoie in, in Paris. And, and I got astonished looking to all the colors that were present in the interiors. And I said, oh my God, why did never ever before have told me that this building was a three dimensional purist painting, uh, like those of the Le Corbusier of the initial uh, period. So it's impossible to understand the perception of that building without, uh, without the colors. So uh, that um, shock <laughs> was probably one of the starting points to, I don't know, to, to, do, to, work, to work on this. So I, I feel that I am extending too much. <laughs> I've noticed that some of our students have, are here uh, with us, Marina and Ampet, I don't know if he was here. Perhaps they want to add something from the other side, from the side of the students. <laughs> Oh, yes, we would love to hear from, um, is Marina here? The presentations were wonderful. So I, I, maybe, can we hear from her about her experience with, with uh, the color project? Hi, hi. I'm Marina, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, my work, it was a, a really beautiful and challenging creating process. My, uh, my work was the, the pavilion one. Uh, you, the, the last one. So uh, from the beginning, uh, we, we tried to use the, the color and its psychology as a powerful um, communication tool uh, or a powerful force that, well, as, as Juan said, uh, that, that can have a, a real effect in our minds and in our emotions. And in fact, creating this, this gradient, this involving a structure, I think uh, that we achieved to create a, a completely new space, uh, different from any other and away from our, our daily reality. And, and yes, and um, of course, um, of course uh, as I think that as this gradient, uh, as this gradient is like a color trip, this pavilion is like a color trip, uh, it can also maybe represent the changing feelings that we are experiencing uh, while going through it. Uh, and yes, and that's why, that's what I wanted to say. 
how do you think it really helped, helps you with in architecture? Because I, I know that a lot of, I'm, I'm talking to you from Austin, Texas, and you know, at University of Texas, and it, color is really not taught like this as part of the program and you know, not really focused on for architecture. So what do you feel like? What can you say? You're already saying it, but the emotions that you're able to address and the sense of how someone feels in a space, how does it feel for you to be able to have color as a tool? Sorry, sorry, can you repeat the last yes. part? How, the does color, how does it feel for you to actually know what color is and, and be able to um, have confidence with it and to use it to express a, you know, a emotion in a space? How does that help you? Because, yeah. Well, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's like you, you, when you know more about life when you try to uh, understand what colors are you are you making in you you know <laughs> well I'm, I'm a bit nervous sorry <laughs> um maybe patricia or juan want to help me <laughs> in this question <laughs> sorry patricia, yeah, do you can you listen to me mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so um yeah thanks marina <laughs> uh, first of all i want you just to congratulate all of you for organizing this and congratulate also Juan for this book. Um, yeah, regarding your question, I think I really enjoy the way the subject of, of color is being taught at the university because um, it's, it's clear that it has this aesthetical point, but uh, the way Juan also approaches this is like more from a functional point of view. I mean, it's for, of course, uh, aesthetics is important, but also uh, color has a meaning. Color is used for something, and color is like a tool that makes our lives easier in a way, or our design easier to be, you know, more understanding or more functional in that way. So yeah, I I really enjoy his classes, and 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 yeah, that's it. As you see, Luan, we have lovely students. <laughs> supers, we are supers. I have a question for the students. Um, before you took the class, I'm assuming you had some preconceived notions about uh, color. And now that you've had the class, uh, what was the most surprising thing that you have learned from Juan? Wow. Mm, I don't know. For me, I, I really enjoyed every class because I, I I did an engineering, not architecture, not design. So I haven't learned from color since I was at school, maybe when I was, I don't know, uh, 10, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I, as I'd say, I really like this approach. It was like super um, stunning for me how precise the study of color can be. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was like fascinated in all the classes how a subject with a name so simple in a way as color, um, how in that subject you can learn so much uh, from it. Any other students have a comment on that? Paula is also there. Hi. 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 Mm, about me, mm, before I have learned color here in this subject, I typically like, um, like here in this subject, I have learned how to apply color and so many things in, in the design work. So now in my work, um, learning this subject and make my thesis about it um, was so interesting to, to learn um, how to apply this on all the projects, branding, furniture, spaces. So that is so interesting to, um, to learn all the things about color and to apply because it's, um, it could be a different between your project 
and the bread of another one. So I think that's so important. You hear me? Um, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, now, now we can hear you <laughs> badly, maybe, but uh, yeah, I think we get the main idea. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> One of the things which is very satisfactory for us is that some of, uh, of our students, uh, before completing the master, they, they start uh, working in these uh, institutions uh, who collaborated with us in the, in the subject. So that's uh, why we feel very, um, glad, for that. very glad, glad for that, yes. Yeah. And, and that's nice, yeah. I think that if you allow me to say that, um, I think that we all um, experiment color, you know, it's like we all have eyes, we all have, you know, we live in, in, in this world, in this colorful world. But it's like, um, as we don't have a lot of uh, basics on, on color, it's like, it's something, personal that you can, you know, that you can choose the color. Uh, this is the idea that we have. And the good thing of the um, Juan's book is that if you, if you um, structure all the possibilities of color and you can see, you know, uh, how color can, uh, can be used to uh, fit the form of a building, uh, can be used to give a, a, a function or to help the functional uh, way of the of the building. If you see that with examples, with you know, with a very structured um, um, concepts, and you see the part, this sci uh, scientific part of the of the color is the moment that you see that, uh, okay, it's not only something personal, uh, only in my personal way, but it's something uh, very powerful. And, uh, you know, it's like, we, we don't have to ignore all the possibilities of color. And, and that's easier if we see all those possibilities, um, you know, in, in a book uh, with all the examples, with all those things that, uh, you know, it's like, um, we are not used to see all this in, in many uh, books of architecture, so that's good. Um, and if you allow me to add one last idea, I think that we, that we try our students to, to challenge themselves because, I mean, the, the color is at the same time fun and risky. So, so in, in these both situations, mm -hmm. we invite the students to to, to challenge themselves to fail if they need, because there's no problem if you fail, uh, you can redo whatever, but at least to try, to try something that they have never done before, because probably during the career, you don't have the opportunity to work for, for one semester in something so specific that it is the color. So I think it's a good experience for all of us. Uh, we, we really love what we do. Yeah. So. And th this could be related uh, with one of the questions that I've uh, uh, seen there about the, if it's a, um, a subject that you have to, to study or something that you can choose. You know, it's like, in fact, uh, color studies in architecture is something that we are starting uh, uh, teaching. Uh, you know, when I was a, an architecture study uh, student, there was no subject about color at all. And now we can see many uh, subjects, uh, at least we can uh, choose one of them. So that's good. <laughs> you are really making a difference. And we have a final question. I think if we can take that, if, we, if you all stay just a couple more minutes for this. Uh, Verena Schindler is asking, uh, Juan, do the students, uh, and I think this would be true of Irene, do the students first listen to lectures on color and then do the project or the lectures on color and project, um, are they proceeding in parallel? Okay, yeah. Um, 
you know, we have a very structured um, uh, course. Uh, Juan uh, structured that very well. And so the thing is, we start with uh, um, uh, a chapter that's called Color Basics. So in that moment, they don't know, you know, they don't have the uh, digital file of the, of the tile. So they know that they will have to uh, design a ceramic tile, but we start with, you know, uh, uh, color basics. And we, we do um, some other exercises uh, parallel. And in, we visit the company at the second or third class of the course. And then they start realizing, you know, the kind of company that they are uh, going to collaborate with. And uh, they know that, you know, they, they start by uh, studying the uh, context of the building that uh, they have to work on. And uh, in, in that moment, you know, we have a class to correct their first ideas. And, you know, but we, um, uh, um, combine those classes with other classes about, you know, um, uh, psychology of color, et cetera. And, uh, you know, yeah, we, we um, combine the classes and, um, but the first, they don't start uh, working on the ceramic tile on the first day, you know, it's, uh, we don't want uh, to work only on one specific, uh, color conditions, you know, as you know, the color, uh, the, the gamut of this, uh, this company is reduced. And uh, we want to um, show all the possibilities of all ranges of color. So um, we have other exercises, you know, uh, with uh, uh, the color palette that many uh, um, um, programs uh, can give. So, uh, the ceramic tile is uh, one of the exercises with its specific conditions, but we want to uh, uh, to work with other kind of circumstances. So that's that's it. Just to add one more idea. Uh, thanks, Verena, for the for the question. Uh, well, yes, definitely. At, at the beginning of the course, we have more lectures and and. Mm and just uh, small activities. In fact, the, the book uh, collects the exercises we do in class, really. So we do a small activities mm. to, to set the basics about color. And then uh, after the half of the course, the second part of the course is more working on the projects and with fewer lectures. But we try to combine both things. Mm. Yes, this is this is a, a work, a hands-on, uh, mm going back from the theory to the practice yeah. so yes the thing that is that we want them to have a great uh, color basics not not only to work with a specific uh, uh, context you know that could be a company or a material or something but we want them to know the main uh, part of color as possible so that's that's why Thank you so much. I think um, we, we really appreciate it. And we're going to turn, uh, Elena will uh, will uh, close close down our session today. All right. On behalf of the ISCC, I want to thank you all of our speakers and all of you for joining us today. Please spread the word about Fluorescent Fridays and save the day for the following uh, session that will be in February. If you're interested in participating, please don't hesitate to contact us. We would love to hear from you and have your in, in your our contact information. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your fluorescent Friday. Bye. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>